texting is, is a form of cheating. Oh, absolutely. I think watching pornos is a form of cheating. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh, uh-oh, wait, uh-oh. <laughs> Hold on. And the hush fell on the road. <laughs> Damn, Q. Baby, you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy vs. Everybody Podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here! The champ is here! What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy vs. Everybody Podcast, episode 188. You already know, man, best podcast in the city. If you think different, then you crazy. We got, uh, she family now. When you come back for a second time... <laughs> You became auntie or whatever, dog. You know what I'm saying? I'm official. Yeah, you're official like a ref, ref of the whistle. But uh, we got mother, grandmother, great grandmother, yes. comedian, radio, pers- radio personality, actress, and a legend in the game, man. We got Coco in the building. What up? What up? So listen, yo, you got to say you got the best podcast in the country. Okay, yeah. yeah I can limit myself to the city. No, you do not. We yeah. know the city. We know yeah. the four squares. We can't. No, we mm-hmm. best. Best, pod, best podcast in the country. In the, well, you heard it. Best podcast in the country. And I'm going to clip that out. Make sure that be on the whole intro. Like, yeah, put that on the whole intro. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? How you feel? I'm, I'm amazing. I feel good. I think I need a nap and a chicken wing, right? <laughs> no, because I need a, a Debbie snack, the oatmeal, oh, yeah. and two chicken wings. Yeah. You ever ate a, something sweet with some chicken wings? No, no, no. Waffles, oh, sir, man. Chicken waffles, no, that's no. It. See, that's, that's the new stuff. I'm talking about a, a honey bun. Yeah. Not the one with the glaze you could peel off, but yeah. the other glaze, and then two good chicken wings yeah. and eat it. Oh my! With some ice water, baby. Listen, what's something that you sh- you shouldn't be eating right now that you still eat? Like you know, back then you eat cheap stuff because you can't afford nothing, but you just can't get over. It. Like me, I can't get over. Like I'm always eating ramen noodles. I can be a millionaire tomorrow. I'm always eating me some beef ramen. So I love ramen. So I love ramen noodles, right? Yeah. But I don't use the seasoning packet. Oh, you 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 do your whole little. I I put <laughs> so I get the ramen and I put a little black pepper in it, mm-hmm. some onion powder, mm-hmm. garlic powder, and then I put a little butter in it. Yeah. And then if I got a can of tuna and water, <laughs> oh don't play with me. If I got a can of tuna and water, I will open that, strain it, and put that in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I don't use that seasoning because it's eight thousand milligrams of sodium <laughs> in there. And your ankles tight as hell, like you got rubber bands on your toes. <laughs> what is something that I eat I shouldn't be eating? Because I was, I was looking at Rick Ross, his girl had made him some hamburger helper. <laughs> Listen, I saw that. Yeah, he was like, hamburger helper. He was so Ch- excited. Yeah, cheddar. <laughs> Listen, he was excited. I, I had me some hamburger helper yesterday, though. That hamburger helper was still good. That double cheeseburger? Listen, no, that's too much cheese. <laughs> I, I know. Had my stomach tow up. Yep. So wait, let me th- let me tell you what I like. What what two things that I I I, I like some good wavy lays potato chips okay um in the, in the red bag or either the one that got low sodium mm-hmm. and some french onion dip mm-hmm. boy what mm-hmm. what <laughs> that's funny that listen the wavy lays and that french onion dip mm-hmm. a twilight zone marathon yeah. mm-hmm. or either catfish <laughs> oh catfish that's me and my wife listen that's our show cat, right catfish is the truth and I'm good. Okay. And give me a diet burners, yeah. or and I love ice water, everything, or some ice water. Mm-hmm. I'm ready. Catfish. That's that's how is people still getting catfish in the year 2024? Because we, I'm gonna I'm give it to you real simple, <laughs> nephew. Because I love you. Come on. We want to be owned and loved. Mm-hmm. We want to say somebody love and care about me. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what length or what extreme do I go to mm-hmm. to say that somebody? I'm somebody. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like when you get into a relationship, they be like, yeah, this is my girl, this is my guy, whatever. Mm-hmm. We want to belong to somebody. It's something in us that we want to be a part of a, a organization, a group, yeah. a sorority, a fraternity, a car club, a, a whatever. So we want to be a part of something. Mm-hmm. So knowing mm-hmm. that, it, it, I won't say it's easy, but if you can manipulate people, you can convince people to believe just about anything. Like they brainwash people to be in a cult and all of that, if somebody keeps telling you the right thing, mm-hmm. and think about it, this is how the game goes. I'm going to yeah. put you up on some wisdom. Go ahead. If you sit and talk to somebody long enough, mm-hmm. you're going to let them know what your weaknesses are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then once you let them know what your weaknesses are, they're going to restructure their whole conversation mm-hmm. to support your weaknesses. Like, oh, yeah, yeah I, w- I would never hurt you like that. Yeah. <laughs> because you exactly. seem like you're such a great person. And, and if I was with you, I, I wouldn't dare take all your money and do that with your debit card <laughs> so i mean because you didn't think about it you've given them the tools mm-hmm. so 
the the art of war is you don't let your enemy know what you're doing, but you don't think a person that you like can yeah, be your enemy. Do that, yeah. But you then gave them all the tools. We're like, yeah, because when I was in the third grade, they used to tease me. <laughs> and they were like, if I was in the third grade with you, I would never I would tease never you that. like that. Now you fall. So so now now you're like, oh, that's so sweet, and it, and it happens. Yeah. And we catfish. Remember the girl that was with the guy and they had been dating for ten years and had never met. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ten years and they had never seen each other. Mm -hmm. She said, "Well, sometimes when I try to Facetime him or something, his phone <laughs> act up." What, <laughs> <laughs> sirs? No, yeah. I'm like, she's like, "Yeah, because I be trying to Facetime him." And then one time, I went to where he was and told him I was there, and he had to work. Yeah. She lived on the East Coast, yeah, yeah, West, West Coast. Coast. She went literally. A four or five hour flight yeah. to meet him. And once she got there, she was like, I'm here. He said, Well, I can't meet you. I'm somewhere else. No, you gonna meet me. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. You, you listen, I done took all my tools and fuses and bought a plane ticket to come here. Uh -huh. Oh, you gonna, I'm gonna meet somebody at your house. I'm going to your door. Yeah, Catfish was a show that me and my wife. Our first summer together, we we are sitting in bed, lay up, and watch catfish all day. Wow! That's like so now. That's so cute. Yeah, we we be getting food, uh, <laughs> going back home like you wanna watch catfish. Like so, of, that's your guilty pleasure. Yep. To this day, we, we matter of fact, we watched catfish two days ago. It was the newest episode, man. Yes, on and, Tuesday. Uh, yep, and um, she was getting got by um the dude because he wanted to uh, buy a PlayStation Five. He all like, yeah, give the money to my cousin. But the whole time, he the cousin. He the, was that the one that was she was cash apping him the money. Yep, yep, yes, yep, yep, yep. yes, yes. Because he he listen, she was cash apping the cousin mm -hmm. because he couldn't get cash app on his phone. Really? So she sending the cash app and all that stuff, and he got down on her for quite no, a few down. dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, you, my man was like, you gotta pay her back her money. All right, I'll try to do something afterwards. You know, they show a little after the show. We yes. never got, we never heard from him. Mr. So and So, <laughs> we have not talked to him. But it's that need to be to be loved and yeah. nurtured. And so to the point, one of the creators was catfish, mm -hmm. and that's how the show came gotcha. to be. Yeah, I miss Max. I do too. I wish he'd come. Like, like, Kim is cool, but Max yeah. was my dog. Like, yeah. when he threw my man's phone, <laughs> man, like, that's my shit, bro. Like, catfish is my okay. show. But think about it. Remember the part, and I don't know how old you are, but we used to have a thing called the party line. Mm -hmm. We had the party line, and mm -hmm. you would call the party line, mm -hmm. and you would call somebody and be talking to him. And you were like, "Yeah, my name is Angela, my name is so and so," and you would talk to him. Yeah. So after you got comfortable with him, because it'd be like twenty people on the party saying, line. So how you gonna get intimate? So yeah. listen, this is how I go. Okay. So it's it's twenty people on the party line. So you like call me, like what's your number? Eight six three zero three three seven. But you get three or four people that call yeah. you because they heard it, and then you finally be like, is this David? Yeah, yeah, yeah. this Angela. So you start talking to yeah, him, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you talk to him for as long as you like. Where you live? I live on Calvert at twelve. I be like, I'm in Highland Park. Oh, we need to meet up. I will meet you at AMP, and then you pull up, and they didn't describe themselves. <laughs> You're not who they are. Oh boy, you done whipped up. Them in the ride, and they standing outside, but they told they got a Mercedes, yeah. a bubble eyed Benz. Mm -hmm. And you pull up, you be like, Where your car? Oh, I let my cousin use. He going to the gas. No, no, no. Yeah. But it's something because we are we are beings of love, mm -hmm. and and love is is in us, and it has to be nurtured. So we want to be loved. We want to say we want women, especially women, like he said, I'm his girlfriend. Ma'am, you 63. You too old for a boyfriend. <laughs> I'm gonna say, at, at her age, you just y'all, y'all kick it. Yeah, at, at, at 60, y'all date for 30 days and get married on the 31st day. For sure. All that long dating. So yeah. what's the longest you? Let's think. What's the longest people have told you that they actually not on catfish? Mm -hmm. But what's the longest time somebody said, "Hey, I dated for 11 years," and mm -hmm. then after that, they tell me we gonna get married? Yeah. Well, see, I know somebody right now. I ain't gonna say who, Don't do but it. they've been together. They celebrated their 11 year anniversary, but they're not married. They just been boyfriend and girlfriend for 11 years. Do they live together? They live together. They got two kids. <laughs> like they. So, I'm like, how do you celebrate anniversary? So uh, -uh I'm finna ask the hard question. What up? What they waiting on? I don't know. Honestly, you want me to tell you the truth? I believe that he not <laughs> he not confident in the, his girl looks. All I right, mean, like, it's been a nice interview. I listen to Shab. Uh, uh, I believe that everybody. because no, my no. thing is he always posting the kids, but he never posts them together. She always like they they go to the zoo. Say for instance, the zoo, that's the zoo. terrible. They go to the zoo. He post like he was just at the zoo with the kids, but she posting the whole family picture. Of him, her, and the kids. But he posting, yeah, me and my little homies. 
Okay, but, so I'm, I'm finna pull the, <laughs> I'm finna pull the trigger. I'm finna he, unload the he, whole he got, clip. Some, he got some women on deck. You already know he got some. So, oh, that's a hard question. But he probably in the, the well, I probably known them for eight or nine years. He probably posted them together like twice. Don't do that, <laughs> nephew. <laughs> so how how does she look? She ain't looker to me. Oh. <laughs> like, but, yo, hey. And how, okay, so, and I know this is a hard question because men don't ever answer this yeah. question. So, how does he look? Like, is he in the position to, to shun her for the way she look? Uh, no. Oh, oh. Like, he ain't like, like the crazy looking dude and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm confident in myself. You know, he if he go out there the way he dressed, the way, you, you know, you can present yourself and get yeah. women yeah. or dudes yeah. or whatever. How you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You kind of cover up things. But yeah, he just it just be like it's so obvious like so and but I guess she okay with it. Yeah. I mean, it, you gotta be okay with it to mm-hmm. not be. And then the other part is why do okay? That's the question. Why saying, we always want to be on social media? Like if we got somebody, yeah, we a, want that picture post. You don't never post no picture yeah. of me. You ain't post worthy. I mean, <laughs> I don't mean it like okay. I guess that's what he said. I don't mean it like <laughs> that. But now if I post you, not everybody in the business. Mm-hmm. So. So should you stay, like, kind of like, just keep your your, your, your family life private? Because with me on social media, with the podcast, I don't post, like, my kids or my wife. But on my personal page, I do. Because you never know. If you get into it with somebody, kind of, you know, talk about your kids. And... That's 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 a delicate spot. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I ain't been in a relationship in so long. What year is this? <laughs> 2024, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, mm-hmm. um, mm, the last, se- okay, we're going to come back to that. Mm-hmm. I don't post my daughter, my grandson, my great grandson, my grandson's wife. I don't do that. Mm-hmm. Although they are on social media, it may be two pictures of us all together, together collectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I I do want to protect who they are. And if I get a good picture, I'll be like, hey y'all, can I post it? Be like, yeah. And I'll post it for a while and then take it mm-hmm. down. The other the other part. Oh, this the, this the hard part right here. Um. Mm-hmm. Mm. Once people in your business, they gonna be in your business. Mm-hmm. So if I post somebody and say, "Hey y'all, what up? This my boo, <laughs> da 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 da. He everything to me. Woo woo woo. I love Charles. He bring me life. Charles, your lunch is ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Charles, good love it. So once you post that part, and if something happened, not what. Mm-hmm. Can you backpedal out of that? I mean, that's what they do now. You, the, the most obvious thing to know that a relationship is ended is the pictures get deleted. Oh, hell yeah. ASAP. Absolutely. ASAP. Immediately. Yeah, like, like, you'll be looking at it and they just, <laughs> they just disappear. Like, oh, they ain't got it no more. <laughs> it's, but it's, it's that's, a, that's a hard do. Like, I done posted these pictures, you in my business. And then people live out their whole relationship mm-hmm. on the internet. Then they argue and all mm-hmm. that. And I be wanting to go say, hey, uh, what y'all doing today? Because I've been following y'all <laughs> for six months. I'm missing the team. Y'all still together? Yeah. Where y'all going to eat? I, I don't. Yeah, but see, I think yeah, people do post too much of their life on social media. Like, you don't need to know everything. Like, when I'm broke, when I'm sad, when I'm happy, when I'm mad. Like, yes. Every everything. step, everywhere we at, we eating. And I'm going to tell you one of my, this is a pet peeve for me. Mm-hmm. Please don't post your food. Why? <laughs> Especially on Thanksgiving, everybody got the same plate. We got the same, <laughs> it's the same fat turkey sitting around the table, the yep. same one on the table. I, I think some things should still be sacred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think if I'm out to eat, I may say, hey, I'm hanging out with my friends. But the people that know how to angle the, the picture mm-hmm. and they take a picture, and I posted food, but I be trying to sell the food. Yeah. But I, you take the picture, I'm like, everything is not, to be on social media mm-hmm. or I'm, I'm about to jump on my supervisor she don't know who I am got me messed up and then later on they hating on me I got fired from my job ma'am yeah, sure. yeah, most, yeah. most places of employment monitors your mm-hmm. social media yeah, page yeah 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 no that's why I keep my, my Facebook clean it's like I said I told him at a certain age you gotta have your regular name on your social media page it shouldn't be uh, uh, James get money on six mile fuck hoes <laughs> <Jones>. <laughs> <laughs> like man, what? Why? In Jesus Christ, yeah. yeah it's, um, why can't it be James Jones? Like don't nobody want to be who they are. Like and then, like my my um my wife had said, like I guess somebody emailed um because she worked for pre K. Okay. And she was saying like it was a crazy email address, like like get this money hoes or some shit like See? it was something crazy <laughs> that he didn't want to tell her email address. Like yeah, can we have an email address so we can send you information? And he's like, 
he hesitated. It was hesitant about it. Like, yeah, I see. You shouldn't have told me that. Like, yeah, you you gotta you gotta be professional. Yeah, you got you got to be a grown up. At, at but the what while. does that look like, though? What I mean for real? What does being a grown up look like? Yeah. What and it's people that literally like, hey, we going to so and so, and they be like, well, what? Okay, let me suggest because I've dated guys and they say, well, we. I say, okay, listen, this is where we going. Mm -hmm. You might want to wear X, yeah. Y, and Z. Yeah. And I'm a thousand years old, and if you my age, and I gotta suggest what you need to wear, yeah. <laughs> then that means you ain't you you ain't been nowhere. Yeah, at all. I mean, sir, we going? It's a black tie event. You at least need a black tie on. <laughs> you can be naked all the way down because you just put a black tie on. Okay, so let's get back to the relationship. So I, my last intense relationship was what's this? Twenty twenty four was uh, two thousand and twelve. Okay, so we dated. For uh, we dated a year hard. Mm -hmm. um, he had been married, got a divorce, mm -hmm. and after the year, I, I guess it was okay. We dated for a year, and he hit me with the okay. Let me do this right. We need to have a talk. Mm -hmm. I said okay. Mm -hmm. He said so. Where you at? I said I'm. I'm at home. Do you need to see me? You gotta look at my face. What mm -hmm. we doing? Mm -hmm. I said well, you could. You know, you could tell me on the phone. Well. I'd rather tell you to your face. See, for me, I I, I really don't want to see you in your face because if you get crazy, yeah. I'm coming home. For sure. I'm, listen, it may be caution tape, but I'm going yeah. home. Yeah. I'm going to be at church Sunday morning. Now, what, however this go down, it's going down. So we met face to face, and he was like, you know, we've been together for a year, and I know you want to get married, and I don't want to get married because I've been married before. Mm. So, you know, I think we should continue as friends. I said, no, 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 we're we not going to do that. <laughs> I said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. This is a suggestion. Mm. Um, you cool, I'm cool, we good, but just continue doing, you know, what you want to do and all that. He said, so what you saying? This over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if we had an intended goal for us dating and then you changed the plan, mm. We're not going to continue to act like everything yeah, good, everything good. Yeah, and I, I'm spinning my wheels, mm -hmm. and we're not going where we initially was trying to go in the first place. Mm -hmm. So he was like, oh, okay. But he kept texting and calling me the whole yeah, like, weekend. Like everything was the same. He kept texting and calling me, and when I got to work that Monday, I was talking to one of my boys. I said, hey, listen, because he asked about him. I said, listen, we kind of broke up. Mm -hmm. Um, no, we broke up over the weekend. He said, so what happened? I said, I explained it to him. I said, but why did he keep calling me? He said, how did you act? Mm -hmm. I said, I was cool. Weird. I said, I was like, okay, I get it. I understand. You know, you've been married before. Yeah. This is something you don't want to do, whatever. That. And he said, and? I said, that was it. <laughs> he said, you ain't crying? No. Mm -hmm. He said, so. I said, he called me literally all day. That was a Friday. He called me like all day Saturday, all day Sunday. And he wasn't picking up. And no, I did pick up. I was like, "Hey, how you doing? What's going on?" I was just calling to check on you. I'm good. <laughs> so my my friend told me that he wanted an emotional response from me, mm -hmm. and because I didn't, no, please, because I didn't give him that, yeah. he couldn't get a gauge on me. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, so damn. I said, I said, "What?" I, he said, "You were supposed to cry, fall out, yeah. tell him." Can we do something else? Can we fix it? Are there other alternatives? Yeah. I said, I didn't do none of that. Yeah. And then it was the weather was kind of nice. So I would see him like where my street is. Mm. If you come down the street near the near that half a corner, mm. you could either go right or left. Okay. But he would come to the street and then slow up and then make a left. Yeah. And I'm like, I think that's his car. Yeah. So he did that for like a month. Mm -hmm. Why are you checking on me? Yeah. We we not together. It's over. I didn't give you the dramatic love and hip hop fallout. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't I Go didn't crazy. give you that. I didn't give you that. So that was 2012, and then in 2017, mm -hmm. I reconnected with somebody, and um, no, yeah. he was he was. Closer to my age, mm -hmm. and so yeah, I need your input. So if you dating somebody, go back when okay. you was dating before okay, you, you got married. Yeah, yeah back so in, so in the crazy days. Yeah, so <laughs> so he and I had dated like in the late nineties, early two thousand. So we reconnected mm -hmm. like in two thousand seventeen, and he was on this. I want to get married. I mm -hmm. said okay. I said where we gonna live? Mm -hmm. He said well. I said no no. You 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 can't come here. Yeah, 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 you. Yeah. 
you you can't come here because well, me I and, come your house. No, no. I said me and my grandson here. You can't come here, and I would need more space, more cloth, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I said, well, what about that house? I said, what about the house that you said you just bought? Mm-hmm. Oh, I bought that house for my daughters. Mm-hmm. I said, so your daughters can have a house, mm-hmm. and you ain't going to disturb them, but you want to come to my house, my house yeah. and disturb me. I yeah. said, no, nah, that's not going to work. That was the first question. The second question was, we got to talk about income, because mm-hmm. as much as I care about you, and I'm not talking about what they're saying now, you got to make $5,000 a mm-hmm. minute, but how are we going to sustain ourselves? Now, how old are you at this time? Like- uh, said, 2017, oh, okay, that was seven okay. years ago. I was okay, 54. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so of course, yeah, you, so you need some, some, some stability. I need and stuff. some yeah. stability. I need to know what your plan is. Mm-hmm. And then my first question was I need somebody that we spiritually on the same page. Mm-hmm. He said, Well, I said, No. I said, Because one day I talked to you, you're a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Then the next day, uh, you a fruit, you a fruit, you a fruit of Islam. Then, then you a Buddhist, and then you something else. We need to worship and pray, and be on the same page to the same God or whatever. He was like, it don't matter. I said, yes, it does. I said, to me, it does. Mm I said, and it's important to me. So, needless to say, that yeah. didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he'll call every now and then. Hey, what's up? I heard you got a show tonight. I do. Yeah. yeah well, I'm coming. Okay. Well, the doors open yeah. at. I, I, <laughs> I ain't yeah. gonna be working until tomorrow. I just want to see you. No, you yeah. don't. Yeah. Cause I think you go through it like those early stages when you in your twenties. You go through that. All right, we gonna figure it out. Yeah. But once you get to a certain age, it's like, hey, we gotta come to this shit. With, like you said, yes. with a plan. We gotta have a plan. Yeah, a plan and stuff. And that, I, it's crazy. I had this as a question: like, where are you willing to look past in the name of love? You asking me that? Yeah, like, cause you know, you know, you can be in love in spite of, you know, what I'm saying like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like for example, like, like too many kids, uh, baby mamas, uh, the job, the car, where you live at, goals, no goals, like. Oh man. Are you like, talking about that mind? Have you ever, like, any point in your life, have you ever loved somebody despite something that you didn't like about them? I, I have been in that uh, that blind love mm-hmm. I, where I did I didn't certain things. I was like, no, I I don't see it's not that person. I I've been that. I've been mm-hmm. uh, what's the song? Crazy in love, or whatever. I've been there. Yeah. But the the older I get, my peace is so important to me. Mm-hmm. My my peace is important to me being in situations that are and you there's I, I don't think you could be in a situation that's totally stressless mm-hmm. but I want to be as stress free as possible mm-hmm. yeah. so at, at this point um, it's things that we can talk about mm-hmm. and it's a common ground but my peace is important yeah. I don't want no chaos mm-hmm. um, if you come to me with truth and you say listen this is my situation and this is what's going on and we could talk about it and you got some a level of integrity, then that's fine. But I don't want no drama. Mm-hmm. I don't don't lie to me, yeah. cause to me when you lie to me, you're making a decision for me. Mm-hmm. And if you're making a decision for me, that's you telling me that I'm not intelligent enough to make the no decision mom. myself. Yeah. So I I it's something in my soul that vexes me about a liar. Mm-hmm. And I can tell when somebody lying, but I just I, I won't say that. I'll be like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this nigga stack up these lies. <laughs> let him do what he do. I'm gonna let him stack these lies yeah. up like dominoes. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. but don't 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 lie to me. Don't try to manipulate the situation. Mm-hmm. And omission is a lie. Mm-hmm. If if I ask you a question or you ask me a question and I leave out some pertinent details, mm-hmm. that's a lie. Yeah. So I don't. I want you to be honest and have a level of integrity as high as you can possibly high as you possibly can and we got to be able to talk about it yeah, yeah, if I, you got five kids say hey listen <laughs> i got i got four kids that's grown and i got one child that's mm-hmm. 10 years old i was with somebody and blah 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 whatever don't put me in a situation don't ever put me in a situation intentionally where i feel my safety is compromised mm-hmm. Cause I'm gonna act like my safety is compromised, yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. I, I I like to clear spaces out. If you put me in that situation, <laughs> yeah, oh so, listen, like you said, you getting back home. We we airing out the yeah, room. Yeah. It's it's gonna be windows where it wasn't supposed to be no windows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's gonna be wide open for the funk. It's yeah. gonna and, and I don't like. Well, no, that's that's in me, and I I'm, I'm able to suppress her, mm. but don't bag me against the wall. Mm-hmm. Don't play games with my safety. Don't don't lie to me, 
and and be honest. Mm -hmm. If you do live at home with your mother, say, hey, listen, I live at home with my mother, and this is the situation. I get it. Yeah. At past the COVID, it's a lot of people that move yeah, back. Yeah, move home. back again. And as as people of color, we tell our children, oh, when you get a certain age, you got to leave. I have friends that are Arab American. Mm -hmm. I have friends that are Asian American. I have friends that are uh, from Nigeria and other countries. And we are probably one of the only cultures that yeah. push our child out when they mm -hmm. get 18. Yeah, because those other cultures, they let them stay as long as they can, Forever. save money. Yeah. I have a friend who she is, she's about 40. And she lives at home with her, with her parents. It's her and her brother and and her mother and father. And they got a house they got, I stopped counting bedrooms. So they got a, they have a home that got about six bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Big, beautiful home and everything. And her parents are very well off. And she said, it's no need for me to move out. Yeah. My parents ain't really in my business like that. I mean, I could come and go as I want to. I travel, I'm able to do this, and my parents do this or whatever. Mm. So what is what am I rushing out to? Yeah. And yeah. she said, you know, when I get to that point in the relationship and I start dating somebody that I like and it gets serious, that's fine. But we rush our children, and we start telling our children that at 12. Hey, hey, when you get 18, 18 you yeah. got to you gotta get out. But you're telling them that, but you never tell them what getting out on your own looks like. Mm -hmm. So you done told your child, and then when they start acting out, so they 12, and then when they get 14, they acting out. Mm -hmm. So they may they may run away from home, or they may give you some back talk or whatever. Well, you done told them in six <laughs> more years, you got to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, get out. So let me practice being yeah, grown. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it, it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. I've been telling you since the sixth grade, like, you got, you going to have to get out of my house. But I'm, if I'm going to be on my own, let me practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, don't, you don't teach them financial accountability. You don't teach them financial responsibility. Mm -hmm. You don't set them up into a position to succeed. You probably got most of your credit in their name. <laughs> they... <laughs> They 12 yeah. with a credit score of 595. Yeah, I definitely had some stuff in my name. <laughs> See? My dad had the Jet Magazine in my name. You know, okay, I'm finna go. Thank y'all for the interview. Why you got the Jet in my name, though? <laughs> wow. Your man, you can't get a Jet Magazine. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's a cultural thing for yeah, us. So, yeah. uh, listen, no. Because yeah. with that same question, because my wife loved me in spite of me. She said before, prior to me, she had never dated a guy with a kid. Okay. So I came into the picture. I got this, you know, seven-year-old son. Right. And she thinking what other women think, you know, you get with a dude, baby mama drama. But me and my son and mom is we just co parents. We don't okay. we don't want each other, we pass that. And once she got with me and seeing that, her friends like, Hold on, it ain't no problems. I like, know. His son stayed with him, like, yeah. It has been good. They actually cool, they cool, they friends on social but media. But she saw that in you. Yeah. She saw I mean, and you, you could see something in a person that will make you say, you know what? Mm -hmm. It's something about them that I'll be willing to take this risk. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be willing to to chance this because they seem like they got great character and, and good intentions. Mm -hmm. So I'll be willing to chance that. Yeah. See, and that's, okay, so the thing is people ignore red flags, and we do. Mm -hmm. We ignore red, women especially. Yeah, I said it. Women especially because we've been taught that we nurturers and we can save everybody. Mm -hmm. No, he didn't He didn't really mean that when he said he was going to crash the car into the bridge at Bella. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. You didn't feel, hear that <laughs> when he hit the bridge? And we think, no, he just, no, I'm, I take you at your word. Mm -hmm. And if you say something that may seem a little far-fetched, that you do something, I'll be like, no, nah, mm -hmm. uh-uh. Yeah. It's a red flag. You you love bombing me. You taking me too fast. You want to take me shopping and all that, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, why are you moving so fast? Yeah. Um, Is that a red flag if a girl give you sex too quick? As a man, like, first day? Is it a red flag for a woman if a man give her sex too quick? For me, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm thinking like, how, 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 how many people she do this with? <laughs> I, so, no, and so, so, let, so let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it's a woman and she dating a guy mm -hmm. and, and maybe it ain't her nature to sleep with a guy on the first date, okay. but it's something about, about you. Yeah, you, she attracted. And she say, I really don't do this. Mm -hmm. Dig the statement. Yeah. I really don't do this, but it's something about you. Y'all don't believe her, do you? Tell the truth. <laughs> That's you. Come on. Come on. You don't, you don't believe her. I don't, but then, like, low-key, with the character, somebody character, but you, you can still be a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> see, see what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? I, I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not gonna believe it at first. 
I'm not gonna believe it at first. And she gonna almost have to convince you yeah. that she not a hoe. And as guys, we still gonna do it though. We still, even though we gonna think about, dang, who she do this with? Well, come on, let's go. Like, so, <laughs> so if you don't trust her, this is a red flag. Mm-hmm. As from as, as for a man, y'all, <laughs> excuse me, y'all won't trust her, but yeah. you'll sleep with her yeah. raw, unprotected. Well. <laughs> Huh? Okay. Ding dong. Who at the door? Open the door. Somebody at the door. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> See what I'm saying? I hope y'all listen to this, ladies, because yeah. this is a confession. This is a married man, solid, great relationship, great family, or whatever. Mm. Why are we so quick to put a value on everything but our body? Mm-hmm. We we won't let you wear our jade. You can't wear my jade. You can't drive my whip. Mm. This, this bag costs 15000 This bag costs this. But I'll sleep with you. Mm. And not only will I sleep with you, I will sleep with you unprotected. And put my mouth on any and everything that you got. <laughs> what the girl say, sexy red? My Louis V, my boy. <laughs> Listen, she done gave out the color of her yeah, body parts. Yeah, yeah. So, why, I'm, it's, it's kind of scary. Like... Why? Yeah, but I think it's okay for guys to turn down some, some girls, like some women. Like I, my uncle told me, it's like sometimes it's okay to say no. Like, yeah, you sometimes, can't. <laughs> sometimes you gotta yeah, turn the plate yeah. down. You can't eat everything. Like, yeah, like you know what, I'm good. Like, but it, you did. You get those, like you said, when you get older, mature, you know better. But when you're younger, I ain't mess around with women who had roaches in the house. And okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> Well, okay, what was your, what was it for you? What was the defining thing for you that you said and I'm not gonna date that woman that got so and so? With the roaches. What was the thing for you like? Nope, that's oh, okay. Then, um, that's a deal breaker. I was I wasn't gonna be in a serious relationship with somebody with a kid. I wasn't gonna do it. Really? Even though I had a kid, I just wasn't gonna do it. That's funny. Because you know, for the most part, the women I knew who had kids, they would still mess around with they their kid dad. What What was another deal breaker? Another deal breaker. Um, man, I'm not this. We know the roaches. I don't think. Yeah. I don't think there's nobody out there like, yeah, I don't want some roaches. No. I, I, had, I had. Well, it was her mom's house. I actually had dated her for a little bit. It's my uh, the I can't. roaches. I can't. <laughs> was it a lot of roaches? It was so bad that when I went to use the bathroom, she didn't turn the light on. So when I used my phone for the light to wash my hands, I saw a whole bunch of roaches. Oh, that would have made me itch. And then yeah, we yeah. yeah. I, I've been <laughs> it was bad. It was in bad. my in my younger days. I um, I dated a cat mm. on the west side off of school craft. Um, whew, he had a he had a little trap trap mm. house situation, mm. and back in the eighties, this was before I had my daughter. He had you know the metal gates that they had on the doors, mm. and he had what's the little uh, oh my goodness, it's like a spree like a little motorcycle. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Little... So him and his boys had one, and they had they was in a two family flat, and they would have to carry it up the steps so wouldn't <laughs> nobody steal it. Mm. And it was definitely a trap house. They had a cooler in the middle of the floor. Mm. And it was a cooler slash a seat to sit on, too, yeah. so you could sit on it. No refrigerator. Well, I, I, no, a well, refrigerator, please. <laughs> and it doubled as a table to roll the weed on, so it had a multi-purpose. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, oh, I can't I can't um, mess with a, a chick who bathed or, or kitchen dirty. Can't do that. Cause my mom, told, my mom told me growing up that's where women are spending most of their time is the bathroom, in the, the kitchen, kitchen, the bathroom. Yeah, so, so you know, women know that now. So when I want fellas, when you look in the bathroom, it's two kinds of clean. It's clean where you don't see oh, nothing. You look at the bottom of that toilet. You seat look at the, the bottom. The oh, where the little screw go yep, at? To, yep, yes, yep. come on now. I know it. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> sir. Yes, sir. You gotta look at that. And people gotta stop taking pictures when their baseboards look like filth. Baseboard be black them up, but the paint white. Like God damn, <laughs> kids back there. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> or they ain't got no shower curtain on the shower. Exactly. Yeah. And, and listen, people have situations. We talking about when you intentionally don't have certain things, amenities that you could get at the dollar store. Mm-hmm. Like, ma'am, you could go. Please get you some alcohol or some bleach spray mm-hmm. or something and get yourself together. And then in the kitchen, yeah. yeah and see, my wife and a get, dirty microwave. Yeah, the, the dirty microwave and a dirty um stove top. Oh yeah. Cause you got criminals them up from now. You said eighties. Yes. <laughs> My wife, every she makes sure my son, every night, even if nothing being cooked, wipe down the counters, wipe down the stove. That's what we did. Wipe down the sink. You had to. Even if you didn't use it, we ate pizza today. Yes. Wipe down It'd the stove. Crumbs. Yeah, just in case. Cleaning up the kitchen consisted of lifting the eyes up off the stove, wiping that down, mm-hmm. wiping the counter down, uh, making sure the dishes is all put up. Exactly. Yeah. And sweeping the floor and just damp mopping the floor. Yeah. And now we got microwaves. 
that microwave got to be clean. Yeah, yeah. I can't open that microwave and it look like a plate of Chinese food in there. I, I can't. And everything you heat up got that same taste yeah, to it. Yeah, because it's all in there. Yeah, because he yeah. told my son, like, listen, I know you think we hard, but one day you're going to have a young lady come to your house and I'm like, damn, he clean. Yeah. Everything in here clean, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? So that's the one thing I, I love about her. I, I got this, uh, ask you this. Okay. As far as the uh, love somebody in spite of, you made this guy. He the greatest guy in the world. He everything you ever asked him to be. You know what I'm saying? How, I don't know, are you like a tall, whatever, however, you know what I'm saying? He, your person. Right. And he comes to you like, hey, Coco, we serious. You know what I'm saying? You like me, I like you. I can see it's going to the next level. But I did have a relationship with a man before. <laughs> <laughs> what do you? <laughs> well, he your perfect guy. Now, as me, I, I, I don't know if I um if I date a woman who used to date a woman because I'm just I'm no niggas be saying like, oh man, the two but. So is it? But for you, how? He said I made a mistake one day, like because it was it was off a movie, uh, Issa Rae show. It was yeah. our, our first show. It, it, yeah. So mm, would I honestly date a guy who had had? An experience. experience. Now I ain't gonna say a full blown relationship, but, but they experience. they had had sex, some kind of sex, some type of way. Yeah, I don't think about situational that sex. It was a situation, and they Got it. they had yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know. And a lot of women say, like, "Nah, hell nah, nah." Mm -hmm. But see, <laughs> we say that mm -hmm. because it's the thing to say. But if he said, "Listen." I, I was in I was in college. This was a situation, and I slept with another guy. If I say, "Yeah, I'm cool with it," I can never bring it up mm -hmm, to nobody. But or to him or you but to, to him. him. Okay. But also, if I say I'm cool with it, when he around other men, am I always gonna be watching him? Like, <laughs> and then you look at him too hard. Like, I be like, "This nigga on the DL." Yeah. <laughs> he helping with see like, hey, uh -uh. I got you, I got you, bro. I be like, uh, how, "Why you got four pink shirts? What does this mean?" <laughs> So it, it would be, if I say it's not an issue, then I have to live my life like it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. So I don't I don't know. And see, when you say that, that's and that's it's funny you say it because like that's like even find out your boyfriend or girlfriend cheated, you could never get. I know I could never truly get past that because like you said, you looking. I'm thinking about that every time we have yeah. sex. Every time you go somewhere, I'm thinking about that time you cheated on me. So and that's that's the hard part when you say, okay, I forgive you, but forgiveness. Is forgetting it. Yeah, I can't forget. And that's that's the other side. Like, could you forgive me and forget it? Not me. Or you still gonna <laughs> be like, yeah, uh huh. I knew you cheated. So, I don't know. Yeah. Like I, mm, this full transparency. I quite often used to get accused of cheating because I spend because your field 85, 90 percent of my time with men. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's it's like. If I'm in, I, I've been in a whole relationship and I'm out of town and my dude called me like, what's up, what, you know, what's going on, how you supposed to show, whatever. I'm like, oh, the show was good, had a good time, everything popping or whatever. He's like, where you at? Oh, I'm down the hall and so-and-so in the room. Why you ain't in your own room? Because <laughs> we just kicking back, chilling, maybe we drinking, whatever the case may be. Oh, okay. Well, you can call me when you get to your room. But every 17 seconds, you calling me you back. In your room? You in your room yet? Yeah. I be like, no, I'm down here. Oh, okay. And then, because people do this, you listen for background noise. Yeah, you get mad. <laughs> you, <laughs> yeah. you like, how many people in there? You ain't say all the people was in there. You the only woman in there. I am the only woman. I was the only woman on the show, and there's three other guys in there. Oh, I didn't know you was like that. So now, <laughs> so now it's a whole argument. Because what is you didn't know I was like that? What does that mean? Yeah, exactly. Am, am I a hoe or whatever? Mm -hmm. And then me, with the mouth I got, I said some slick stuff like, I didn't have to come to Mississippi if I wanted to cheat on you. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's an argument, argument. Yeah, I can go I'd down like, the street. I had to come to Arizona. I could have went around the corner and, oh, oh, so what you saying? I'd be like, so you I'm did saying, that before. yeah, I'm, I'm saying we're not finna argue about this. We can talk about it when I get back. So it's, it's like, mm -hmm. mm, how do you, funny. how do you, how do you handle that? Yeah, yeah. So I was accused of cheating. So, I mean. You already think I am, so let me go on and cheat and yeah. get it out of my system. Yeah, I was about to say, have Coke ever cheat on that road? Like, you know what, Craig? I, I have, I have, I have cheated. Um, I think I cheated in the city more than I did on the road. Y'all like, damn, she's young. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, oh. Um, I did. I, I, um, I cheated. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, well, okay. I did cheat. Did I cheat in the city? I did. Mm-hmm. I cheated in the city. <laughs> right. I, I did cheat in the city, and uh, I'm not proud of it. It's a reality. No, for sure. Y'all ain't going to beat me over my past. Like, yeah, you yeah. Mean, I did. Mm-hmm. And then I did kind of cheat out of town, but not really. <laughs> but I did. Huh? <laughs> you know, first thing I thought about was on uh, uh, um, um, Boys and Hood when he said, yeah, I sucked the titty or two. <laughs> yeah. But, but any contact with a member of the opposite sex that's not your partner, to me, is cheap. I think texting is, is a form of cheat. Oh, absolutely. I think watching pornos is a form of cheat. Mm-hmm. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hold on. And the hush fell on the road. Hey, they do feel weird you got your weight ring on you. Doing... <laughs> Ain't that nasty? Let me put that down. Let me put that down real quick. And you got an old eight-year-old bottle of lotion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so wait, wow. I heard the skirt. Cause so listen, y'all, it's it's. No, it's, it's but, uh, I'm in school. a room full of fellas, yeah. no, But what? Why did y'all? To me, if we in a relationship, so let me say this: <laughs> if we if we date and. It's a difference between crazy. it's a difference between dating with intention and just dating. Mm-hmm. So at my age, if we're dating and I'm getting to know you, whatever, I'm dating with intention. I'm dating with this is gonna go somewhere. We we gonna get serious because mm-hmm. I'm I, I want to be married. Mm-hmm. Do every guy me be like oh, I want to get married? Let's get no. But I'm dating with intention. But like you said, is sexting or texting is mm-hmm. cheating? Why is sexting cheating and porno not? Cause you actually engaging with, you know what I'm saying, with somebody else. They're just words. A partner just watching somebody else you don't know. See, see what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's just words when you text it. But watching porno, I think porno. But those words can 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 lead to something. So oh, so it can that porno. I mean, it, it leads to you pleasuring yourself. <laughs> but. With that old eight year old. Hop, hop in the shower. But you gotta keep putting it on your hands because it dried up. <laughs> Every four strokes. <laughs> It'd be like, scratch, scratch. You know <laughs> like a chalkboard. Be like, damn, a little scratch. Get the video in and turn it off. And just... So, I mean, well, I don't, I'm, I'm not a fan yeah. of porno. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, if I'm with a guy and I walk in and he getting it all the way in and I'm, I'm gonna feel some kind of way. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. But like then, so, so I guess you, as as guys, we should feel some type of way. And like they using those red roses and yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm allergic to plants. Yeah, I, like I, I ain't got no rose, no rabbit, <laughs> no uh, no. I ain't got none. You suction on the wall. Yeah. I ain't got none of that. At one point in my life, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did have some. T- so okay. Ooh. <laughs> I had a really good friend who um, was bisexual, and he worked for one of those companies mm-hmm. that you that sold all the stuff. Mm-hmm. So he would bring me the latest in technology of some of the devices that yeah. they, <laughs> that they got. Oh no! Listen, he had he had one that got warm and mm-hmm. all of that. So I never I never used it because I always felt like somebody was looking at me. Yeah. And I know I'm, I'm like, I'm in your, you in your house. Why are you acting goofy? Yeah. Like, I would try to use it, but I would be covered up and then trying to use... you trying to sneak like... I'm trying to... Yeah, like it's other people in the house. <laughs> so, so... And I knew, okay, so let's go back to the back. But he was buying me stuff that he wanted to see me use mm-hmm. because he was attracted to me, but I didn't know it because when he told me he was bisexual, mm-hmm. I thought he leaned more towards being with another man. Mm-hmm. So I made this mistake. One day he was at my apartment, and I took a shower, and I came out the shower, and I had my robe on. I'm sitting on my bed, mm-hmm. and I lived in the loft. So I'm sitting on the bed, and I'm lotioning up and doing all that. And he was <laughs> like, he said, you're you going to have to stop that. I said, what? You my, you know, you, you bisexual. You don't want me. He said, no, you, you need to stop mm-hmm. that. And he moved his jacket, and I said, oh, man, you, you got the whole thun, thun, thun going. Like, he was ready to, ooh. Ready to take you down. He was ready to take me, <laughs> listen, Mortal Kombat. It was, and I, I was like, I said, I, first of all, that song, my, mouth, down. Yeah, my mouth got dry. I'm like, I didn't know you was that heavy down there. And I, I felt bad. I said, I really apologize. He said, why do you think I was buying you them? I could have bought you anything. I said, oh, so you bought them? He said, yes. Oh, and I said, this too much yeah. for me, right? I, I don't know how to feel. But, yeah, so I took them later on and threw them away. So I don't I don't own nothing. I don't yeah. own none of that. Because it's only going, once you, 
once you keep doing something or keep using something, yeah, if it's like cars. You you keep shuffling, eventually you're gonna have to deal. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not gonna put myself in that situation. I don't own none of that. If I feel the need to, these hands is all right hands. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no rose, no dandelion, <laughs> no bell pepper, no jalapeno. I ain't got no eggplant, no banana. I ain't got none of that. And there's women that do, and that's fine, but sometimes it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Like, you still, okay, I done did all this, and I'm raw, but I still won't. A touch. Yeah. I still want somebody to still kiss me. me. Yeah. I still want somebody to hold me and rub their feet on my feet. So mm. now it's like, oh, mm. yeah. it, it, no. Hey, me and my wife gotta get my daughter to bed. You know what? How old <laughs> is your daughter? Be three feet in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> we about to get them. Up. She she about to go in my son's room. She uh she three. Okay. So okay. They, they still my son's seven and three. So he's still at that age where he can share a room. Yeah. Cause she ain't gonna yeah. sleep by herself. So we get them a bunk yes, bed. Yes, she will. Yes, she will. We'll see. You gotta, you gotta finesse it. You gotta because you be that much like you, you, you holding her, but she right there. What up? Oh like, my god! No, no, see that's awkward. Yeah, that is. That then is we ain't got no babysitter, so I'll be like, oh, wait till you go to bed. And be funny because they pop up. Like, hey, what y'all doing? Like, or you gotta just put your foot against the bathroom door and then be quick with it <laughs> when they can't push the door open. Exactly, real quick. You like, gotta be like, eh, like eh, eh, er, er. Yeah, let me show you something real quick. Come here. Yeah, <laughs> and you, you, you figure it out. But yeah, porno to me is cheap. I think. Men that watch porno, you have a certain thing. You're not going to watch all kind of pornos. Mm -hmm. Because with porno, you have a selection. So if you like dark-skinned women, you're going to get the dark-skinned yeah, women porno. BBW. If you like BBWs, that's what you're going to get. You ain't going to go get a woman that you're not attracted to to try to satisfy you sexually. <laughs> you ain't going to just watch anything. I, don't, I you, you a tell. You're not going to just watch anything. I, I watch all over. I ain't going to lie because I asked this question to people um, a couple times to a girl, so, to ladies. What's the craziest porn uh, search you had your phone and you know just being curious you you search some crazy stuff handicap porn <laughs> i did it before and like the way he carried her out that wheelchair like her legs oh, like oh i'm not her legs was dead like this and he's like father so, god we come before you today i ain't gonna lie so you say it's t t sometimes you're curious like so I'm, did you watch it the handicap one yeah, yeah. did you clutch it yourself no 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 i just watched i was just curious about that one <laughs> I, I that much of a freak like <laughs> And then midget, because you know some midget got some nice little bass eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you got that so gotta be a fantasy though. You gotta, you know, you gotta. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, no, I, I. Sometimes like, like you, you global with it. You know, you watch the, you know, you got the big women, skinny women, yeah. petite women. You just want, you just want to big you know, butt or fantasize about it. Yeah. I ain't gonna say I fantasize, but you know, but just you curious. So if you watching porno, it gotta be an element of fantasy involved for you to be able to self pleasure yourself, yeah. right? I guess. I mean, but I ain't pleased myself. Y'all just disrespect y'all penises. Y'all just, <laughs> y'all just uh, put tuna fish oil on them or anything. Y'all don't even damn. That's crazy. Oh, uh, we just uh, we're doing anything. Yeah. Here to see y'all. Uh, see y'all, y'all disrespectful. Yeah, I ain't watching no crazy like no animal junk like you know what I'm saying. None of that crazy wild stuff. Uh, but the uh, handicap one, I was just curious. How long did you watch it? I, I just, not a long time. I said hard when you picked her out of the chair. Her legs was dead. Laid her down. <laughs> and then we had to do it. <laughs> it's like the list is all over. <laughs> I don't even know what. And then me and my cousin were talking about the um. We were talking about um. Uh, oh, the Siamese twins. And we were talking about like how like it was these Siamese twins and one of them was I'm, gay. I'm not listening to. And the other one wasn't. So it was I, like, I know the men or the women. <laughs> it was the men. <laughs> I saw that. So like he, if he get his his world rocked and you over there is looking. <laughs> Like this. Right, um, I can't believe my brother though. I, I don't even know what this how to, it's a joke in there somewhere yeah. but he gotta be so tactfully created and delivered yeah. no it is it is and speaking of me and my um, me and my family we was talking about like how we wanted to have a game I mean a game night but it turned to a comedy night Okay. where everybody write them a two minute bit and see who can have the funniest set wow okay and I, man, that, I was gonna ask you how hard is it to create a joke and how do you know if that joke hit because I thought this joke I had wrote was going to hit and my, I don't know my wife ain't I guess she ain't funny I thought it was funny and so you can turn it to you so know, what was the joke it was about buying condoms at, at night in the gas station okay. and a lot of times I, I was saying like yeah man you know this one particular night I went to go buy some condoms thinking that nobody be in the store because I want to buy regular size condoms <laughs> And you and let me finish the joke. So because it was too many people in the gas station, you wind up buying Magnum. Yeah, yeah so and had to tie a knot in the end of it. No, so no, that ain't the joke. No, no. So see, he heard yeah. So everybody in there like, hey, let me 
Let me get the condom and Madam XL. Yeah. <laughs> Cause everybody in there. And so then you get your condom, go out the door and see everybody leave. You go back in there, hey man, give me the motherfucking trophy. Yes. <laughs> take, that, but, take that shit back. But but that that concept, so it depends on your writing style. Yeah. But that concept and that premise, whenever you create a joke, you gotta be as far fetched and your your concept or the punchline gotta be so removed that the average person mm -hmm may think about it but you gotta deliver it where it's funny. Yeah. So with that joke, like I said, you buy the magnum yeah. because as a woman I've seen men go in the gas station late at night <laughs> and buy magnums and I'm looking like, you know damn well you ain't no magnum. You need a minimum. You don't need no magnum. Why you you wasted you can put marbles in the end of that thing and it still won't be full. So why you why you see what I'm saying? Why are you wasting your time? Yeah. So yeah. It's a joke thing. It ain't you you just gotta figure it's out how to, it can't be how, too predictable. Basically. No, you gotta rewrite it. You gotta yeah. say you was outside and you was trying to sell them, and the police pulled up on you. Thought you was trying to sell narcotics, <laughs> and you like, no, nah, why well, I'm selling condoms? He's like, why are you out here selling condoms? Be like, listen, <laughs> listen, I bought them, mm -hmm. and and it was too big, but I didn't want to be embarrassed because everybody was in the store. Yeah. What? Well, say it a little louder. <laughs> he was like, officer, officer. <laughs> They, they too big. And, what? They were too big. Hey, hey, man, hey, 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 don't do that, man. What are you saying? Hey, man, hey, man, can you cut that body camera off? Can you do... So you got to take it to a, a far enough place where people are like, dang, that yeah. could be true. Hey, you sound like a comedian. I might be one. <laughs> see, I see what you're saying. You, you put more to the story. It ain't straight to the point. Yes. You, you got to have some... Yeah. You got you to gotta, you gotta lace them up and then finesse them. Or yeah. if you go straight to the point... You got to go straight to the point and mm -hmm. and figure it out like, this is really funny because yeah, yeah. that could happen. Mm -hmm. Comedy is something that can possibly happen to someone that you may know or someone that you might have contact with. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's that's really funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or something that you think about. Yeah. Like when Adele Givens said, um, if I give you oral sex, it's like giving a whale a Tic Tac. The, <laughs> the thing that made the joke so funny because you think as big as a whale's mouth is and just throwing a little bitty Tic Tac in it, it's like a grain of rice. Mm -hmm. So that that made it funny because mm -hmm. it was way beyond the reaches of what an average person may think about. Mm -hmm. Comedy got gangster, though. Comedy yeah. gangster now. Well, we've been gangsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was, I, want, I want to touch on that, but what, at what point did you feel like, you know what, I'm I'm great at this. Like, you put the time in, you put the work in, the effort, and what was that point or moment where you was like, damn, like, I'm a legit comedian. Um, I I, I started comedy in in uh, April of ninety one. Mm -hmm. So I had auditioned for that 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 skit I did on Def Jam mm -hmm. with the blue shirt on. I had auditioned for Def Jam like four or five times, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. When it finally so when my comic view hit first, mm -hmm. and I finally did comic view. And it was on TV. Mm -hmm. That was like the first layer. That was 96 as well. Like, okay, I done did some shows and I'm working out and I done work with this person, that person, or whatever. But this is real. Mm -hmm. And then when I did the Def Jam in 96 as well, it's like, okay. So it sort of look, look, they gave it the stamp, like, you're legitimately a comedian. Mm -hmm. The first part, first time I went on road, I started in 91, I went on the road and I did a feature spot for Mike Bonner, okay. and that was in 92. So I was like, okay. But as I started working for people that were known and, and all that stuff, it sort of add the, so I'm not just a host anymore. I really get, I really can feature or um, I'm not an opener. Oh, I really get to work with Bernie Mac or whatever the case may be. So as your, your repertoire fills up and you get to open for more people and your name actually on the dressing room door, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, this is real. Yeah, yeah. I can, I made enough money to pay my bill. Yeah. So that's the thing. Am I going to make enough money to pay my bill? And what bill? Am I making enough money for a down payment on the car? Mm -hmm. Am I making enough money to get my child's teeth fixed? So mm -hmm. you start, it's just, it's sort of like rappers. Mm -hmm. How much money am I making? And I'm able to, am I able to move some around? With the money that I make. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Now you said these uh, comedians is gangsters. They're gangsters. <laughs> the year twenty twenty four has been. It's only what a month, two a month and a half. Listen, in. month, month and a half. And um, Cat Williams, you know, he said it all. 
<laughs> he blazed. Uh, Shan Sharp should thank him every day. <laughs> yeah, those numbers. Right. Them, yeah, man. Well, he, I think he got fifty-eight million right now. At least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He about to beat the record, and the record was like I think sixty by um, Joe Rogan. Yeah, and that was over a span of years. This mm. has been two months. Yeah, he got less than a month. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. So, so it's like with him, he he did a lot of accusing of a uh, joke stealing that goes um, on gatekeeping all that and all that stuff and then you got monique where she you know she's been on her, her thing as far as like people blackballing her kind of you know with the kevin Hart's, with ty perry's with oprah do you feel like it's just a little bit because it's you know, with comedy is worse than rap it's like comedy and rap about the same because a comedian talks about what rappers rap about mm -hmm. so that's why a lot of comedians know a lot of rappers and vice versa because the stuff that rappers rap about, we talk about. Yeah, because T.K. Kirkland said that he do a, he did a lot of shows. He was like one of the com only comedians to do a lot of shows with rappers. Yeah. Oh, okay. I right, never mind. <laughs> never mind. But... <laughs> yeah, I don't want to know now. Yeah. I don't want to know now. It's, 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 if, if you, that's what you want to do. So T.K. did have a reputation with rappers and he would do the shows with the rapper, mm -hmm. um, the rappers. I mean... Mm -hmm. You you comfortable? You feel like, you feel like when you work with a rapper, they understand you. They understand what you're saying, and you feel kind of comfortable delivering that material, that concept. Mm -hmm. It's 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 interesting because you create um, what's the word I want to use? Give me a good word. It's mm, repeat the question. Let me. <laughs> I'm well, thinking. As far as uh, the, these comedians and beef and stuff, and yeah, it being so. So let me let me say this: the the beef is a lot of things that Cat Williams said mm -hmm. is some truth in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, a lot of things that that Monique said is is her truth, mm -hmm. and um, it is a lot of gatekeeping. It is a lot of, of of stealing. Just like you got rappers that stealing bars from old songs, and you like. Hey, and I used to do this a lot with my nephew and my uh, my grandson with younger people. Mm. They be talking about a rap song. I be like, go to so and so and so and so and play that song. They like, Spice Adams does it a lot on his page. Mm. They be like, oh, that's so and so. I be like, nah, that's this. They be like, oh, it's the same thing. Mm. So they steal some of the bars, mm. and and they rap to them. Mm. So. Rappers do the same thing, and comedians do it. If if me and you both doing comedy, and I got almost 33 years in comedy, and you got two years, mm -hmm. and you do a joke, and I be like, damn, that joke funny as hell. <laughs> I be like, wait a minute, what nephew say he did? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. I may take that joke if I was a joke thief. Mm -hmm. When you see that joke again, I may be on stage at the Fox exactly. doing that joke. Yeah. Or I may be on doing a Netflix special, when you see that joke again, everybody gonna be like, dang, that joke Coco did was funny. Mm -hmm. And you like, that's my joke. Yeah, I did the little bar. Yeah. yeah, who gonna believe, who they gonna believe? Yeah, they gonna believe, they gonna believe you. They, so, and once it go to TV or it go to a major audience, even if you do it again, they be like, no, man, you stole that from so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Because they looking at it as, why would she, with that much time in the game, steal from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, he probably stole it from her. He looked like he'd steal it from her. Mm -hmm. So it it is all of the yeah. same thing that goes along in the entertainment profession, the gatekeeping and, and the microaggression and the macroaggression is the same thing that goes on in comedy. Mm -hmm. But people don't see it because we make people laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And laughing is so relaxing. Everybody want to laugh. So because we make people feel so good mm -hmm. in the midst of their pain, People like, uh, yeah. no, yes, it's it is gatekeeping, it is joke stealing. Is, is there is there a comedian that you know right now that should that should be bigger than what they are? Like they they just maybe ain't getting the push or whatever. I think about somebody who well he's he's deceased, but I think if his if he would have been around, he would have blew up. Who? Uh, Robin Williams. Robin Williams. Robin Harris. Robin Harris. Robin Harris. I'm sorry, baby. King. Robin, Robin Harris. Harris. I said yeah. Robin Harris. I believe it because he kind of remind me. I guess they both from Chicago. Bernie Mac. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. I think Robin Harris because he started doing movies. Yeah. So you know, you you go down the road and you, you know, start doing movies, and them checks look different. Yeah, because Baby Kid's supposed to be in a real movie. It turned to an animation once he passed yes, away. Yes. Yeah, yes. So it's like, do I go down this road and I get this money for doing the movie, or do I stay doing stand up? Because mm -hmm. if I get the money from doing the movie and I get residuals or points on the back end, I could still see that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes doing a movie may be easier. Yeah. 
um, I think it's quite a few comedians. I don't want to say, well... Because I don't think Wesley get his just due, even though he, oh. he major, and he might be because of TV and movies. Martin, I think You So Crazy is one of the best uh, uh, stand-ups you know, ever. But me. Martin was able to produce and direct and write, and he was able to create a platform for himself. Mm -hmm. So even with the show, even with some of the concepts, he was still able to do certain things. Mm -hmm. So he stepped away from comedy because it's easier to produce a project and put it together. Like he had the project, um, he did the lit as fuck or whatever. Yeah. So he did that at Little Caesars Arena and I got a chance to perform. So he's sitting there chilling. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you getting a check. Yeah. <laughs> if, I mean, no, for real. Yeah, yeah. He I mean, that, if, yeah. you, if you want to work, you can work. You can go on stage, hey, y'all, thank y'all, good night, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But if not, you can still sit back and get six or eight of your favorite comics and do a show, and them checks still going to clear. Exactly. It's still going to be the same. It's, yeah. it's still going to be the same. Now, if you feel like you want to go on stage for any point in time or whatever, like he walk in the comedy store or the cellar or wherever he at on the east or the west coast, and he could get on stage. It's like Eddie Murphy. All Eddie Murphy got to do is show up in the room. They're like, oh, put Eddie on the stage mm -hmm. if that's what he wants to do. So it's sort of like, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? Okay. Like with Ice-T. Ice-T been on uh, Law & Order for how long? <laughs> Forever. And every time we interview Ice-T and somebody asked him, when you going to go to the big screen? He said, why would I do that? Yeah, this is money right he here. He said, yeah. I've been doing this so long Every time I go to my mailbox, it's a check in the <laughs> exactly, mail. Exactly, ready for me. You get two or three checks. I mean, you know, you got direct deposit, whatever not, but you getting two or three checks mm -hmm. a day. <laughs> you getting residuals, and then on the ones that he may write and direct, so you getting extra money. Mm -hmm. So he got to put the work in and, and all of that. It's the same amount of work. Mm -hmm. But why should I do? I do one movie, I get one check. Mm -hmm. I've been on Law and Order 20 years. <laughs> it don't stop. It, it keep, don't stop. It, keep, it stay in motion. So think about it. You watch a Law and Order and they do SVU and all that stuff like that. So if you watch a Law and Order and they show 50,000 episodes, they're doing a marathon <laughs> and Ice Cube in it. You ice tea, Ice Tea. You Ice Tea in it. You just sat and watched that man make two or three million dollars yeah. sitting watching. Yeah, why you eating popcorn? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you eating? What you say? You and your life wife like to eat ramen noodles. <laughs> no, this is me. This is me. She's too good. So it's 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 like, do I do I do this mm -hmm. or do I do this? So you mm -hmm. you got options. Yeah. If if um, real quick, I know a comedian that was having a conversation, and he, it's another comic who they've been they've been trying to kind of trying to get to do his own special, mm -hmm. and he. The world thinks he's ready, okay. but he knows that he's not ready. Mm -hmm. And he would rather continue to do the work and the grunt work and the tour or whatever than to go out and do a special. And people be like, oh, he's funny at the show. But he sometimes people not as talented when they by themselves. Mm -hmm. So if I do an hour special, I'm by myself, as opposed to if I do 20 minutes on the tour, it's good. Yeah. So a comic was like, listen, man, I'll write you, you know, I'll write you a 20, 30 minute set. Just give me $10,000. Mm -hmm. And that's on the low end. Mm -hmm. So it, if you could just sit and write a person a 20 minute set, just off their personality and their character, or whatever, and you make $10,000, mm -hmm. that's okay. Yeah. And that's on me and you having the conversation. Mm -hmm. That ain't my manager talk to your manager, your people talk to my people. Up. That's like, let, let me write this for you. Hold on, Coco. Yeah. You wrote some shit for somebody? Huh? So, um... <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's money in writing. Know, know that it's money in writing. It's mm -hmm. money in directing. It's money in producing. Um, yeah, it's money when you go to the stage. Mm -hmm. But if you got three or four people that you're writing for, they're three or four streams of income. So we know Coco get three or four. I ain't saying, listen, if I was getting three or four, I'd be at home taking my nap. <laughs> of course I would have came and did the show with y'all because y'all my peoples. Man. But 
you know it's money and right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, so for it's, sure. it's a lot of people like being, a lot of people like doing that. Like they like to be in the background and just yes. you know what I'm saying, do what they gotta do. And they could come out and now that you finding out people that have written for you, like, I didn't know they wrote that for them. Mm-hmm. Or oh, I didn't know they they and usually we don't find out until that person passed. Correct me if I'm wrong, wasn't Paul Mooney writing a little bit of Richard Price stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, you keep the entertainment, you keep the writing going. You know, we used to get together and have writing sessions, somebody on their laptop, somebody on got a legal pad and they writing stuff down. Yeah. But it's money in that. See, but back then you could probably just chill. Now, so when somebody get a little conflict, a little beef, hey, I wrote I wrote this, I did yeah. that. Like Well, that's why you make them sign a non disclosure agreement. Okay. Yeah. That's that's why it's been it's been people that have made five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars writing for somebody, but they can never tell. They're a ghostwriter. Yeah. Same thing in the music industry. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, who wrote that? Well, I, I don't know who wrote it, but <laughs> the check cleared. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So it's the it's the same the entertainment industry is the same across the board creating mm-hmm. a character and writing for that person and doing all that stuff it's the same thing across the board if i could write for you mm-hmm. i'd be like hey listen i can write that song for you how much is gonna uh what you gonna do give me give me half a meal mm-hmm. and i'll sign the nda it don't matter mm-hmm. i no non-disclosure agreement and every time you you do the joke i'm just sitting there like yeah in my head <laughs> I wrote that. <laughs> but now, how do you feel as the comic or that rapper that's rapping or or reciting something on stage that's not yours? Like, even though you're making this money, can you really feel like I'm legit? Yeah. How do you feel when you go on stage and and you are artist yourself and you got on another artist's clothes? Mm. Mm. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah. It's 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 sometimes it's easy when you look at it like that. <laughs> yeah. You know, you you. You got sneakers, but you wearing Jordan sneakers, yeah. or you got clothes, but you wearing this person hat. Yeah. Could it be easier to create your own style? Mm-hmm. I mean, after yeah. a while, you don't think about it. Yeah, that's that, funny because I remember Jordan saying like, if he played against somebody, he's seeing with his shoes on. Like, I got them already. He got my shoes on, so I can just like, yeah, you playing my shoes right now. Like, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> my shoes are what's giving you the confidence to play this game. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's like I, I got that. Mm-hmm. I, you know, like women that wear weave. You got on somebody else's hair, ma'am, <laughs> ma'am, or, or man. Yeah. To, <laughs> yeah. Dial that attitude back. You got somebody else's hair on. So yeah. it's it's like, do so, I have a good product? Did I put a good product out? If I put a good product out. I'm okay with that. Yeah. So, so do you? So, you, you, do you have that person though that you? I know you said you had a couple people that you feel like should get more love and more recognition than what they've been getting. You, know, <sighs> you, you conclude yourself. I think the thing that kind of slowed my career down was the fact that I was doing radio and commonly, common comedy concurrent. Mm-hmm. Like you know, people hear that they think about jail, but I was doing <laughs> uh, radio and comedy at the same time and. Did the comedy make me very comfortable in radio or did radio make me very comfortable in comedy? Mm -hmm. I'm at the point now, after being um, unemployed since COVID hit, since literally 2020, Mm -hmm. like no outside of comedy or doing Zoom or whatever, like when the pandemic hit, I was doing talk radio at 9, 10, and when it hit, that ended my stream of income. Mm -hmm. Wasn't no more radio money, wasn't no more that. So it was all based on um, me doing shows and me doing that. And I've learned so much. Mm -hmm. When you have to do it by yourself, it makes you refocus and rethink of what you're doing. So now I am laser focused. Mm -hmm. And it was a spiritual journey for me. So when I say that, my knuckles hit the ground. Mm-hmm. My knuckles hit the ground. Mm-hmm. Where I am, okay, where I am now financially, I'm navigating in a place that I've never been in. Okay. Like, to be dependent. So, it was humbling because now I have to depend more on God than I ever have in my life, mm-hmm. which is gives me a sense of release and a sense of, God, I know you got me, yeah. than when I had all the material stuff. And I don't want to say I was arrogant, but I was more confident with the material stuff than what yeah. I had. Yeah. I was more confident with the money that I was making. It was coming in. Yeah, I was more confident than, you know, every two years going to get a new whip or all that stuff. Now all those things have been taken away from me, but my peace is the same because I totally unconditionally, unabashedly have to rely on the Lord for everything that I have. And I'm learning to do that 
and I am so good. Mm -hmm. Before, when you got everything, I'm like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I, I wasn't really arrogant, but I got too dependent on those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh, ran, yeah. I ran across this uh this mother who posts her daughter a lot on her page and her daughter blonde, she's like 12, 13. I love that little girl. Man, I'll be wanting to cry till I see her. Your happy. eyes getting wet now. Yeah. Like, man, she doing everything, riding a bike, washing yes. dishes. And... When her mother, listen, her mother was teaching her how to ride a bike. Yeah. And and her mother was there with her, like riding next, walking next to her. Mm -hmm. But the little girl was riding the bike. I said, God is amazing. Yeah, yeah. Like, we, we take that part of our life I don't want to say for granted, but this little girl was riding a bike. She washed dishes. Mm -hmm. She cook. Mm -hmm. She get her clothes. She get yeah. her clothes put her together. Hair in a ponytail she put her hair in a ponytail. People say how? For people that are visually impaired, they have devices that you could put on your money. You could say, "This is a five dollar bill. This is a ten dollar bill." You could put stuff on your clothes to tell you, "This is gray. This is black." But when I watch that little girl, mm -hmm. I'm like, man. I say, girl, if you don't go sit your goofy ass down, tell myself that somewhere. <laughs> exactly, because you start thinking like the little stuff that you mad about, crying about, is is people got it's problems. Nothing. They wish they, they wish your problems was their problems. And did you? She did an interview, and I think somebody wrote in and asked, well, did she? What she want her sight or something like that? Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, I'm fine. I love myself, and God loves me. Everything. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I was at work, like, man, trying <laughs> to put this stuff on, like, God. But it's it's amazing the stuff that we think will make somebody else happy. Mm -hmm. Like we thinking, I bet she'd be happy if she could see. But what's to say her spiritual vision is mm -hmm. not ten times out? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, yeah, it yeah, make that, you look at stuff different. Yeah, that, that little girl, man, I'll be watching every time I feel like you know what, man, man, yes, up, man, yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> get your stuff together, man. Up, but man. It, it does make you appreciate. And Vivian, um, her name Vivian Green, at the, the singer. Mm -hmm. Vivian Green got a son named Jordan, mm -hmm. and um, he got some physical limitations, and he does Motivational Monday. He say, hi, this is my name, Jordan. Go to Vivian Green on Instagram and check out her son, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Man, listen, that young man be spending so much game. Yeah. He be like, I know when you look at me, you see this and this and this, but I want to talk to you about love. And the stuff that he said, I be like, <laughs> I'm <laughs> always comment. I always comment. And then a few times, he respond. I be like, Jordan, this really helped me today because yeah. I was really having a terrible day. No, for day. sure. No, for sure. You be needing that stuff like, God, all right, let me pick it back up. So why... In our life, as we see those people, we see them differently mm. than what we did when we were younger. Mm, yeah. Because there's things happening in our life that makes us stop yeah, you, and see those things. Yeah, but then you appreciate life, you yes. like this stuff, you know what I'm saying, lost, death, everything. Like. Yes, yes. And I think now for, you know, people say, why do these young people act like that? One of the things that these young people deal with, they deal with death and dying every day. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, and I'm, you and my daughter the same age, but when I was growing up, if somebody died, they may have been had an illness for a long time, or maybe they were in a house fire or a car accident. But we didn't see death. These young people see death every day. It was a shooting last night. A 17-year-old boy got killed. Yeah, the 15-year-old died in that Yeah, um, the 15-year-old was at the hotel and got into a, a, a gun fight or whatever. These young people see death and die every day, so they numb. Mm -hmm. They're not going to feel like we want them to feel because... I see death and dying like, oh, that's so sad that baby died. But they, they touch by it, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but it don't touch them the way it touches you. Yeah. And then it touches you different from the way it touched me. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot that these young people got to deal with. That's why they live sometimes on the edge. Yeah. Maybe that's why the girl had the little kids uh, in the car. Oh, my God. I don't know. We, we ain't going to talk about that. <laughs> you see, that, that, that was a foolish bit. So I got a question for you. What do you think about people that get... They made faces tattooed on their face. Oh, that's terrible. That's, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> now you acting like an old man the way you say, oh, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. You to... Come on now. I, I'm good with tattoos, but now you just doing a little too much now. <laughs> you, you can't get the whole tattoo on your no, face no, like no, that? No. You better get on your shoulder. <laughs> and that person better be deceased. Like, <laughs> still living. <laughs> like, yeah, it's my, 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 my girl right here. See, but it's, it's, it's funny that... They, a lot of people don't see nothing wrong with it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot of stuff you look at. Like it just social media is, is got it's crazy, man. It yeah. just depends on how you use it and what you look at that. What yeah, you're watching. and it make you go place. I'd be like, I, I didn't want to go here yeah. today. I don't I don't need to know that this woman says she don't 
bathe every day. She only take a shower every six days. <laughs> it's good for her skin. I didn't need, she, uh, and she was like, the, the guy asked her, first of all, they was doing a podcast and she had a mask on and the guy said, how often do you shower, whatever. She said she only shower every six days and she washes and conditions her hair and she don't use a rag. She just let the soap run down her body. <laughs> it's crazy. Black people, we gonna use rag. Yeah, and yeah. we ain't got no rag, we gonna take a sweat sock and flip it on yeah, the wrong side. I got, I got, I got two rags. Yeah, we gonna, well, of course. You better have a face rag and a yeah. ha-ha rag. Yeah. You better not put that D&B rag on your face. <laughs> you got two rags there, boy. Like, hold on, You man. better put the, the man. Yeah, because my I coach basketball, so I let the kids follow me on my coaching page. I don't let them follow my personal page, my right. podcast page. Right, I got a coaching right, page. Right. I'll be seeing some of the stuff they do in my one guy that like why why is you on your social media smoking the little blaze and yeah yeah breeze I mean just going crazy yeah. like these, oh man because no one wants to be left out mm -hmm. I mean self esteem is 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 challenging right now mm -hmm. young ladies and young men don't feel that comfortable with themselves that's why they always got a hoodie on mm -hmm. because I can hide I don't care if it's ninety degrees I could flip my hood up over my face. And I feel safe in my hoodie. Yeah. So they young people are dealing with a lot. And to you parents and, and grandparents and you people that surround younger people, have a conversation with them. Stop saying that's all y'all young people do. Mm -hmm. You did what you could get away with too. Exactly, yeah, for you, sure. You slick and did, you did some stuff too. Yeah. But have a conversation with them because they need love. Yeah, yeah, do yeah. they do some stuff? We be like, damn, I don't believe that. <laughs> but they still need love. Mm -hmm. No, fast, fast, they fast. They still need somebody to say, you know what, let me, let me talk to you about this because we don't... No, Sukiana. <laughs> they didn't know magical for musical. Yeah, uh, like I'm not no, no I ain't magician. <laughs> right. So what are you saying? She said, think. I don't think. Yeah. I'm an icon. Ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Yeah, you fooled. Yes, but who taught her? Yeah, she, I don't know. That's the question. She's 30, right? Who taught her? Yeah. I'm yeah, just saying. All right. Um, I appreciate y'all coming to do this <laughs> podcast with me today. I've had a wonderful time. And I do, I do, I know that, you know, you, last time you, I didn't want to keep it too long, make that, you know, that leg, I, you said you got restarted a little bit. Man, this leg like an old ass mini bike. You <laughs> but I, I, I want to know about uh, Coco's uh, Cabaret. Coco's Cabaret. The first night yeah. was last night. First night was last night, mm -hmm. uh, February the 15th. It was amazing, amazing. We got so much talent. Not just in the city. I have two people came from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, one guy came from Washington, D.C., and I had a guy come from Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. We had singers, comedians, uh, poets, all of those things. So we'll be starting it. So we doing one. We did one on the 15th of February. We'll do another one on the 28th, which is a Wednesday. And then starting in March, we're going to do 10 weeks. Okay. So the thing that they're going to get, they're going to get an opportunity to get their bios worked on, get their pictures and stuff mm -hmm. done. But you get to work on the stage in a big showroom, mm -hmm. a complex, an entertainment complex, a space or whatever, that's owned by a internationally recognized comedian, Mike Epps. Mm -hmm. And then you also get, I'm going to say it with my chest, an internationally known comedian that can host it that understands what entertainment is about. Yeah. So it was amazing. Mm -hmm. So go to one might go to info at one might Detroit dot com mm -hmm. and, and register. Mm -hmm. Info at one might Detroit dot com and register. And if you're interested in being a vendor, go to info at one might Detroit dot com and send your information because we're looking for vendors as well. If you sell Louis <laughs> Vincent or you <laughs> you you sell Gucky or you smell a uh, Christian door or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you sell, if you're a vendor, reach out to info at onemikedetroit.com and we're looking for vendors. You just can't sell food or liquor items or whatever. Mm. But we're looking for vendors. Yeah. So follow me on Instagram, Coco the Comic, and then follow me on Facebook, Ginger Hudson. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> now y'all in my video. <laughs> I hired y'all to be an extra. Y'all off in my video. And you said, well, this you can do. It ain't just about jokes. It's about you can sing. No, we had some singers last night, and I'm so glad that I'm just a host and not a judge mm -hmm. because we had some really, <laughs> no, with some real, real talent that uh -oh. showed up. It was a young guy named Sage. He showed up, and his voice was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, he had an old school voice like his grandmama raised him and taught him how to pick greens while she made him sing in the kitchen. <laughs> 
So it was another young lady named uh, Leo DeShell or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think I don't want to mess her name up, but she had an amazing voice. Like I said, it's a lot of talent. Mm -hmm. A lot of, I'm, lot I'm, of I'm talent. Just, reach out to some of my... Come on uh, down, yes. Reach out to some of your folks. Yeah, a couple of some of my singers that was on here, you know what I'm saying, had some... Yes. Some toys, Sky, all them... Yeah, uh, yeah. yes. Come Tell them to come on down. Right. And it's not just a one-time only thing. We looking to push the talent to a no whole nother level. Mm. Um, the audience can come. It's absolutely free. It's no cover charge to get in. Mm. You do have to purchase two items. Now, don't come in there and sit with your arms crossed. You're going to spend at least a dub in there. You're yeah, going to get yeah. some french fries and a drink okay, or something. Yeah, give me a chicken tender. And a yeah, we can, that, we can get that. <laughs> the turkey chops, their food is slapping. The turkey yeah. chops fire and everything. Yeah. So, absolutely. So, now, I love y'all. Yeah, the last thing I want to ask you before you leave. Yes, sir. Man, over he cold. He put the... <laughs> yeah, he cold. always cold. <laughs> Listen, he like a penguin. He always cold. My intern is always cold. But you should see us in the car. I got my window down, and he got the heat on. Hell no. I'm Bro, that's, like, and that's how me and Mari be. We be the, she wanted to be cold. I want to be hot. I'd be like, God, come on. <laughs> but what do you feel about um, the whole Usher thing? How everybody was like tripping about his performance and him grabbing Alicia Keys that, and stuff like that. Listen, if Swiss didn't matter it's and happy. mine... And his fiance didn't mind. It go with the business. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. You know how many pictures I got where I got my head on a man's chest or on his shoulder? It go with the business. If I don't want you, I don't want you. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing going at me. Oh, not, no. Swiss Beast was cool with that. Usher did the thing. And they actors, too, you know? Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, if I, I don't want you, I don't want you. I yeah. think it was a nice picture. We always got to read extra and stuff. Yeah. Although they did, him and Ludacris and Lil John, they did look like superheroes. They really <laughs> looked like uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. <laughs> they did that blue suit on the black and yes. <laughs> Usher did it. They Usher, Ludacris. I, I like when we perform. Yeah. Now, what's the girl that go with the football player? Uh, oh, oh, man. What's her name? What's her name? Uh, Taylor, uh, Taylor, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift or Taylor yeah. Swift. I yeah. It kept put pan in the camera to her. Yes. Oh. I, I, Taylor, sit down, and then I'm, I'm going to put this on the floor. Her dude that she dating pushed the coach, right? Mm -hmm. And then four, it took him four days that he did that Sunday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Thursday or Wednesday. He apologized on his podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took you four days to say, I'm sorry, y'all, a little hot-headed. Yeah. Let me push an old white man. Oh, yeah. that. <laughs> and that definitely would be a black dude doing oh, that. Oh, listen. Like, oh, had, had a black player pushed him? Yeah. Shackles on my feet. Yeah. Won't allow me to move. <laughs> he might want to play that second half. Man, you played. Man, they the drug you out like they did Killer Mike at the, at the Grammys. Please. Well, Killer Mike. <laughs> yes, I love you, Killer Mike. Yeah, so that's a great album. We could, I couldn't have pushed him. Yeah. And he said, oh, it's, it was just a lot of uh, aggression and a lot of stuff that was going on. No, nah, man. You almost knocked that old man down. Yeah. Yeah, no, he started him everything. He wasn't even, he didn't even see him coming. Like, man, oh, that man brittle as a popsicle stick, and you <laughs> almost knocked that man down. Hey, I'm still salty about the Lions not being in that situation, man. Uh, God. You, know, you, it's a lot of folks was planning on going to Vegas, making them some money. Yeah, yeah, I cry almost, man. Well, we'll go next year. Yeah, but, uh, I appreciate you reaching out. Yeah, I appreciate you reaching back out. Yes, uh, because the first time you came was July 2022. Don't rub that in. That's your fault, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all know how to get in touch with cool. IT? I told my wife, like, Coco yeah, says she want to come back on. I ain't even asked her That was almost two years ago. Yep, yep, yep. So I could come back on. And, so, and yeah. listen, find somebody. So listen, y'all. Find a nice single man that you would want your auntie mm. to date. Yeah. Don't don't find nobody that's for the love of Coco. Yeah, don't yeah <laughs> for the love of Coco. Yeah. Don't find nobody that's, that's crazy. Got a lot of habits. I don't want nobody that smokes cigarettes, please. And if they smoke anything else, they can't just wake up every day waking and baking and shaking, <laughs> please. And they if they got habits, they could be nominal. I really don't want no smoke, no cigarette smoke. No porn search. No, man. <laughs> Oh. No, no eight-year lotion. I don't want no eight-year old lotion, and I don't want no man that feel like he got to send me a picture of his manhood. I hate that, just yeah. randomly. Good morning, Queen. Yeah. <laughs> Grand Rising, beautiful Nubian princess. Pete, Pete. the son of Oshun. Come here, man, man, look, did this here. What up, though? That's, give me the what up, though. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't want, just give me some regular and let me be okay. And yeah. I need a man to know how to tie a necktie, too. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I had to go on YouTube. Boy, I'll be forgetting. You. <laughs> so that means you ain't wearing ties enough. Well, I, I, I like to put that clip. You cheat. Wow. <laughs> wow. Clip on. But, hey.
You cheating. Now you got you got to teach your son how to tie a tattoo. I know. I'm, I'm going to get it together, Coco. I'm going to get it together. That's the process. Now, I've been asking everybody. This is the last thing. I've been asking everybody. Nobody has helped me. What? Who would you want to see on the podcast, but you got to help me get that person? Oh, man. Um, mm -hmm. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. Who can it be? <laughs> be another comedian, whatever. Well, I'm 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 gonna I'm uh, throw this out there. You gotta help me. Okay. This this is the interview I've been wanting since day one. Who? Jalen Rose. If you got anybody that can lead to him, he ain't even gotta come to the hood. We go to his school. Okay. Well, I, I probably could do that. I oh. could throw that on the floor. Cool, yeah. Cool. Cool. If you could do that, hey. I, yeah. I could send a couple. I give you my tax money. Listen. <laughs> I could I could probably get to Jalen Rose and yeah, that would be a great podcast. For sure. Yeah. Jalen Rose. Uh. Just do the Fab Five. What's my man named Jimmy King? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 C-Web. Yeah. 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 Listen, when yeah. I started the podcast, it was like two people I wanted. Uh, uh, but the other one, that's far fetched. <laughs> Big Sean. <laughs> but I mean, and, but and it, it's do. Listen, you life and you speaking into existence. Oh, for sure. yeah, I right. want to do Big Sean. It's somebody else I'm thinking about. Derek yeah. Coleman. Yeah. Um. Um. What's the man name? Barry Sanders. Oh yeah, I seen Barry Sanders one time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that dude's strong. Than <laughs> yeah, but he's like a little pit bull. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, Jay Rose, you heard it, man. We had come to we had come to JRLA. We had yes. come to the school. You ain't even got to come to the hood. We had come send to him you. an email. Yeah. Send him an email. Go on Instagram and do all of that. For sure. For and sure. and send him a snippet of some of your stuff that you mm -hmm. done done. Yeah. It's doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, like I said, I appreciate you. You you know, you a Thank big you. name in the city. Mm -hmm. And for you to come uh, and mess with us, uh, hey, we appreciate it. I come mess with y'all all the time. Yeah. I'm finna go right now because my knee, the way my knee is <laughs> set up. All right, y'all. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I ain't, listen, I'm Coco the Cockapoo or whatever. <laughs> my knee said go to bed. I'm yep, been, and, and, I'm, and I love y'all, but I've been, I ain't high, y'all. I won't tell y'all I ain't high. I was a little sleepy. Yeah. But I got my water. For sure. We gonna get some wraps for your water. Yep, and I'm yep. finna go home. I love y'all. Keep doing this. For real, for real. Mm -hmm. And next time, could y'all have some food? Yeah, I got you. I got you. I guess I'm hot ready. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, some it's vegan bologna, or <laughs> some bologna, whatever. It is. I can't believe it's bologna. It's yeah, I can't believe it's bologna. It's something. Yeah, but this is Shaw vs. Everybody, Coco, you know, comedian Coco, episode one eighty eight, best podcast in the world. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know Say that. If you think different, then you tripping. Absolutely. Peace out. On that. Peace.